Well, the college football playoff rankings came out last night, the first set of rankings, and you already know people are going to have their disagreements with the rankings. I have my own personal grievances with them, but we'll talk about those as we go down the line here. We have quite an interesting slate. And it's been what I've been saying on Twitter all week, um, at least the past few days, um, since Saturday night, that the focus this week is going to be, um, there are some SEC games that are important to decide both divisions, the East and the West, and we'll talk about those. Both of those are big, by the way, very big. Another team that is uh, searching for something is searching for respect, at least, it's the Clemson Tigers. Big time game for them this week. We'll talk about it. And then last, but certainly not least, the most entertaining conference to watch this season, the Big 12. Important all around. We're talking most majority of the games in the Big 12 involving the ranked Big 12 teams. In fact, all three of them are going to be important for this week. So just so you know, those are my those games that I have kind of mapped out. Those are my six highlighted games. I'm just going to tell you that right off the bat. So, anyway, we start on Friday night. Pac-12 after dark. Oregon State, Washington. You know, I don't know if Chance Nolan's going to play because he's been hurt, um, but this Oregon State team is finally right, you know, again after quite a long time. And they go up against the good Washington team. Don't get me wrong. Washington does have two losses. Don't get me wrong. They have two losses. But Michael Penix and the Huskies, they can score. They can put up yards. This is going to be a tough one for Oregon State. This is going to be a real tough one. We'll see how this one goes and everything like that. Because it's, it's going to be a big one. It's going to be a big one on Friday night. Cannot wait to look at that. But Saturday, big at noon, is going to Fort Worth. That's right, Fox is going all the way to Fort Worth to see the number 7 TCU Horned Frogs. Yes, TCU is number 7. Some people, you know, and uh, the Horned Frogs themselves definitely feel disrespected by this ranking. I personally would have had them a little higher, but it is what it is. I already told y'all my top 10. But, you know, this is a Texas Tech team that has beaten another ranked team. But we'll talk about that ranked team in a minute. And that's the main reason I'm angry at the CFP rankings. Uh, again, the Red Raiders, yeah, they have a defense that's not that great, but they can move the ball. Like, this is the same Texas Tech team that was just moving and grooving, you know, however many plays they had against Texas. However many plays they had, you know, against West Virginia. They can move the ball quickly and efficiently. This is going to be another tough test for Max Duggan and company. They cannot have another letter. They cannot have another game like they've had. You know they have to control this one. They have to control it all the way through. You know you can't have a game like West Virginia where you're going back and forth. You can't have, you know, you know Oklahoma State or Kansas State where you have to come from behind. You have to control it, and that's the that's kind of why I think the committee right TCU at number seven. Because they have just no control over games at all sometimes. You know, there's outliers, of course, but the last month or so, they have not had any control over their games. They've had to fight throughout, and that's why they and that's why the disrespect is coming. That's why the disrespect is coming. Undefeated TCU, you got a big one in front of you. So while that's going on, you got Ohio State Northwestern, which CJ Stroud will probably throw for like 300 yards. And Ohio State will put up 50 points in Northwestern. North Carolina, Virginia, in which Drake May, who um, is actually leading the FBS, he's actually tied with 29 touchdowns total. You know, North Carolina at number 17 right now, likely because of a loss to a certain team that we'll talk about as we go down the line. Like, this Tar Heels team just continues to win. The ACC Coastal, not that great. I mean, look at Virginia. The team they're going up against. Reddit Armstrong and company just aren't the same as they were last year. Just not the same team they were that was fun to watch. Not that team. And then Tulane, Tulsa. Tulane, good defense. You know, an offense that's pretty good. They can run the ball. They can throw. 
Tulsa cannot stop the run, cannot play good defense at all. But, you know, some people kind of like the fact that Tulsa could upset Tulane. Who knows? We'll find out. And I'm glad that Tulane is right in the top 20. You know, should be. Um, they, 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 they should they, they should be around this range right now, you know. Um, if it were the 12T playoff, which again, I've made my peace with that, even though I don't like it. They'd be the highest ranked group of five team, you know, and the only group of five team to be in as of now. But this is as of now. We still have a crazy November to get through. In the afternoon, oh boy, the game of the year. You know, you thought Tennessee, Alabama was the game of the year. This one, right here, Tennessee. Honestly, you know, I could, you know, I, I, I was, I've been saying it's been Georgia, Ohio State, and then everybody else. But Tennessee, they deserve their number one ranked. I mean, they have the best resume. I mean, I, you know, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't saying, you know, I wasn't gonna say Tennessee would be the number one team. But I mean, I, I've kind of figured that Tennessee would be picked as the number one team by the CFP. That's how the committee felt. That's how, that's how it's going to be. So, Tennessee, number one, with Hendon Hooker, Jalen Hyatt, high-powered offense on the Vols, going up against Georgia, Stetson Bennett, Brock Bowers, a defensive-minded a offense that can score of the dogs. Tennessee's defense, they can lock down, too. You know, Remember, it was against Kentucky, who does not have an offense to save their lives, but Allowing only six points last week. That is big for that Tennessee defense. This is going to be a game of points. Honestly, you cannot book it any better. We're going to have another track meet. You know, you thought the Alabama-Tennessee game was a track meet. I think this one might be a track meet as well. Honestly, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to somebody making a stop. Georgia's more prone to making the stops, though. Can Tennessee get that stop? Again, Georgia's favored, but the question is, is can Tennessee, and we asked this question with the Arizona USC game last week, one stop, that is all Tennessee needs, one stop, they get one stop, they're in the driver's seat. And then the other games in this afternoon slate, you got Oregon, Colorado, Colorado is awful, they only have one win, Bo Nix, he might have another field day against this terrible Colorado Buffalo's team, the Penn State, Indiana, same thing, you know, Nittany Lions trying to rebound after getting humiliated by Ohio State, and the Hoosiers, again, how did this team beat Illinois, how did they beat Illinois, because their offense is putrid, their offense is terrible, they can't do anything at all with the ball, and the Nittany Lions, they have to try to do something, you're going to have to try for a 10-win season at this point, Penn State, try for that, again, a big one, highlighted game, Oklahoma State, Kansas. Jalen Daniels, is he going to return to this game? That's been one question that's been circulated. Spencer Sanders, will he rebound? Will the Cowboys rebound after getting humiliated by Kansas State last week? Like, they got absolutely humiliated. Like, he didn't score anything. Somebody in this game is going to lose, and somebody is going to be left in the dust in the Big 12 race. So that's why this game is important for the Big 12 because, again, the Big 12 race is, again, one of the most important races to watch in college football right now. Who is going to the Big 12 championship? We don't know yet. You think it's you think, you think think you know, but you don't. You don't. I don't know. You don't know. We don't know. This one, honestly, this might be an eliminator. Kansas is still in it. Yes, I said Kansas is still in it. Despite the fact that they haven't had, you know, the best time lately. Big one. Get on this game and watch it. Because the rest of the slate in the afternoon, aside from Tennessee, Georgia. Ugh. Like, Michigan State, Illinois, for example. Like, again, we know Michigan State's run defense is terrible. So, guess who they get this week? They don't get Blake Corn. They get Chase Brown. And, I mean, this man has already ran for over a 1,000 yards this year. Hell, Blake Horm got over a thousand last week, so I'm expecting Illinois to run, run, run against Michigan State, and we know that Illinois defense can play. You know, 
Syracuse Pitt's also kind of weird. You know, it's a it's an interesting one, but at the same time, it does not really matter in the ACC anymore. Like, yeah, Syracuse is still in the race for the Atlantic, but like this game does not matter because Syracuse decided to shit the bed against Notre Dame, and like they shit the bed against Clemson. So, you know, two lost Syracuse does not does not matter where they are right now. Irrelevant game against the pit team that's completely irrelevant. Like this pit team is four and four. I mean, you got Israel Abadikanta, you you got Keaton Slovis playing all right, and then you got the Orange Garrett Schrader, Sean Tucker. All the Orange need to do is run the ball, but can they keep doing that? Can they do that? Like they haven't been able to do that. They've been for, they've been forcing themselves to pass when they don't need to. That's why they've lost these last two games. They need to run the ball. Very simple. Let's run the ball. Both these guys, Israel Batikana and Sean Tucker, all they need to do, I need to see both these guys go over 200 yards in this game, honestly. Just run the ball, please. I'm begging you. I don't need to see these quarterbacks throw, especially Garrett Schrader. Don't need to see him throwing the ball. Then UCF Memphis, a lot of people kind of question why UCF's even in the rankings right now because of their loss to East Carolina. You know, they lost to Louisville. You know, like... Again, this this somebody has to be ranked. Do you want Liberty? Yes, I, I did say Liberty. Do you want Maryland? You know, I, I I had question marks over some of these teams like Liberty and Maryland. You know, because I really had no idea where the CFP would put them if they would even go there. But somebody had to be number twenty five, and that's UCF. Again, this is a good UCF team. Sure, they had lost two games. But they're still in the driver's seat. Somebody has to come out the group of five this year. You know, it's 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 really, you know, again, I, as I've been saying, it's really the Sun Belt and the America this year. The Sun Belt is still kind of crazy and up in the air right now because nobody's watching the Sun Belt. Is anybody watching the Sun Belt right now? You know, no. Like the first month of the season was peak Sun Belt football. October, it's quiet. All eyes are on the American now. UCF, they have to keep this up against the Memphis team that can score, but this Memphis team could get scored on. So that will be in UCF's favor. Again, UCF has a good defense. They got a good running game, as we've discussed and we've seen. So we know UCF can do some damage. Again, the American is going to be key. Like I said, on Saturday night. You know, on, or rather Sunday morning, I said, the American going to be key to watch in this last month of the season. And we need to keep our eyes on UCF Memphis, just like we do we need to keep our eyes on Tulane Tulsa. And then in the evening, you got Arizona and Utah. Arizona, unfortunately, still has no defense. Again, all they needed last week was one stop against USC. They couldn't get it. Will they get the stop against Utah and Cam Rising? I don't think so. I don't think so. Utah trying to keep the momentum up to stay in the Pac-12 race. They got to stay in the Pac-12 race. They can do that. They'll be fine. But again, the, the big ones. Before I go over the big ones, let's go over let's go over these other ones first. You know, like Blake Corum and the Michigan Wolverines going up. It's Rutgers. Come on, it's Rutgers. This Rutgers team, they've improved. But I mean. You're going up against J.J. McCarthy. You're going up against Blake Corb. You're going against a Michigan team that plays really, really good defense. You know, yeah, they're number five. You know, wouldn't have placed Michigan at number five, honestly. But it is what it is. And then Wake Forest, NC State, a game that honestly does not even matter anymore. Um, it would have mattered had Wake Forest, NC State, took a gear of business, took a gear of some things like Wake Forest. They should have beat Louisville, but instead they decided to completely... <sighs> the eight turnovers, man. How do you turn it over eight times? And they did see State. Like, Devin Leary's out. And they lost their they lost their game against Clemson. That was really their only chance to stake their claim. And then, you know, NC State lost again to Syracuse. So, like, this game honestly does not matter anymore. Be Jack Chambers. He's been struggling. The Wolfpack defense is the only anchor for NC State. And, you know, Wake Forest, the connection of Sam Hartman and A.T. Perry, 
Hopefully that gets back together and mends itself because last week, don't know what happened. Don't know what happened last week. But ah, yes, the three big games in the evening. You know, first up, Texas, Kansas State. You already know. I told y'all I was going to have a gripe with the CFP rankings, and it is unfortunately the inclusion of by the wrong horns being ranked. I know why. I know why Texas is ranked. But why are they ranked? Why are people picking the horns to win this game as well? Please don't don't do don't do this to us now. I I, I can't I I can't right now. Texas is trying to go bowling. That that's the first concern Texas has. The Big 12 race is also of concern, and this is pretty much a game that could eliminate somebody from the Big 12 race. Kansas State has one loss. Texas has two losses. And Deuce Bond. You know, ready to run all over the Texas defense. We know Texas's defense has been kind of mid at times. Kansas State's defense has been so much better. And, I mean, the Wildcats continue to just ride high after destroying Oklahoma State. But can they keep this momentum up? That's the big question. Can they keep it up? We'll find out on Saturday night. And the other two, first up, Alabama-LSU, a top 10 matchup. LSU ranked number 10 for some reason, likely because of that Ole Miss win. But honestly, they should be ranked number 10. You know, that's just me. Yeah, but you got Jay Daniels, Brian Kelly, and this LSU Tigers offense that has been improving. This LSU Tigers defense that has been improving. And then you got Bryce Young, Nick Saban, Alabama, one loss Alabama. Death Valley at night. Alabama's defense has been kind of eh lately. But it's still Alabama. You know, you cannot doubt Alabama until the game is played. So, somebody's defense is going to fold in this game. Alabama's defense folded against Tennessee. That's why they lost that game. They folded. They got hit hard, and they folded. LSU, honestly, they should have beat Florida State. They didn't. They just got completely steamrolled by Tennessee. So, again, somebody's defense is going to fold in this game, and that's going to be the big difference maker. We know LSU has been improving steadily over the season. But, again, defense is the answer. Always. And then, next up, Clemson, Notre Dame. This is the game for the ACC right here. This is it. This is one that we've been circling. You know, this is one that people have been circling in the preseason. They circled this back in May. You know. Clemson... Is the ACC's only chance. Clemson is right number four for some reason. They should be number four. In fact, I would have them placed all the way down at number six. I believe I said that. And this is a big one for the Irish, who, again, I don't know where people are coming from with this. Like, again, Notre Dame struggled on offense for the first month of the season. But well, they found their stride. There was no problems with that defense. That defense is legit. I've been saying that. It was the offense that was the problem. And, I mean, you got Michael Bayer on offense for the Irish, you know. And on Clemson's side, you got Will Shipley. Two difference makers in this game. But, honestly, the big question is, can Clemson get past Notre Dame's defense? And can Clemson stake their claim to go into the CFP? If Clemson loses this game, honestly, I wouldn't put it past for Clemson to lose the game down the line. And I'm talking about the ACC championship. This is big for Clemson. They have to win this game. You don't win this game, you're out, honestly. I really think that because the ACC just does not, again, these ACC teams that are in, that are ranked to the lower 20s, they're kind of just there because they have to be because there's nobody else that can be. Like, these, these are just not good wins for Clemson. They're ranked wins, but they're not good wins for me. Personally, so this is the game for Clemson right here. This is the game for the ACC right here. This is honestly, you know what? Let's say it's the game of the week for me. Game of the week type material. And then Pac-12 out the dark. UCLA takes on Arizona State, and Cal takes on USC. Caleb Williams, the Trojans going up against the bad Bears defense, and then you know also earlier, like an hour or so earlier. Arizona State, they got to try and stop DTR. 
and the Bruins offense, but I mean, this Bruins offense is just on fire. Like, even against Oregon, which they got pretty much, you know, ran over, they were still putting up numbers. Arizona State has to make a stop. We'll see if they can. California, they've just, they're just, they're just not good. I'm sorry. Like, half the Pac 12 is not good, and half the Pac 12 is pretty good. So, the bad teams in the Pac 12, they might get steamrolled late at night. We'll find out and see, you know, what in the world happens. Because again, you know, UCLA ranked number 12 for some reason. USC ranked number 9. I wouldn't have them ranked number 9. I'd, I'd in fact have these two teams flipped. I would have UCLA at number 9, USC at number 10, just because. So, in any case, this is going to be what the hell of a week 10. One hell of a week 10. Cannot wait for Friday night and the long weekend to follow. I mean, my goodness, we're going to have another 2 a.m. recap, aren't we? Oh, boy. Cannot wait for all that to go down. So, until 2 a.m. on Sunday, I'll see you all, you know, as far as college football is concerned. And the rest of the week, we got more stuff coming. So, keep liking, keep sharing, subscribing, click the notification bell. And hopefully the audio stays all right for every single video going forward. Thanks guys. Big Boy with Sports signing out and I'm sorry about all this noise.